Here's a short little update on my ahi pineapple crack key that I'm growing. I started this in, when was it? It was July of, probably the first part of July I started these. And this is why I've tried crack key on a five gallon bucket. Find these buckets at Home Depot usually. It's growing quite well at this point. You can see all the flowers that are starting to come on inside there. And how dense it is growing is what's really amazing me. These little starts here uh, weren't there when I first put it in here. Those have grown since I put it in about a month ago. You can see all the dense growth on the top. I'm having to raise this light up about once every two weeks as it's starting to fill in. And I'm also trimming up the sides of the plant. I'm trying to keep it within the boundaries of the five gallon bucket. I don't know if I'm going to be successful at that, but I'm trying to do that so it'll grow more in a column style instead of spread out because I only have so much room in here. Here's a quick look at the roots that are growing down there and the master blend. I'm using the master blend on this. It's working really well. It smells kind of like roots in there if you know what roots smell like. That is just a three inch net cup. And I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea at this point. I have a, uh, some lids that go on there that are actually six inch net cups that are integral to the lid itself. Um, but I can't transfer this one now that it's grown so much through that one. I need to try another one and immediately put it into the six inch. And that's something I wanna try over the winter but if you can have the space and the time and some lights to grow in a five gallon crack key setup with Master Blend or any of the other mediums or the other different fertilizers that are out there for hydroponics, I'd highly recommend giving it a shot. I've been amazed at how well things grow this way. Here's another one over here. This is a Scarlet Lantern. Look at the density of how this one's growing. I mean, I've just been, it's sitting a little sideways because I have the lid pulled up a little bit. But look at the density on how everything's growing in this five gallon crack key bucket. There's one pod on there. I see several more pods that are starting. The amount of flowering that's happening on it, how dense the leaves are. I haven't trimmed this one. I don't think I've trimmed this one even once yet. It's been growing pretty well. Um, but this whole crack key also started at the same time, at the start of uh, July. The top of these roots looked really good, but now they're looking like they have a little mold. I don't know if that's going to be a bad thing, but all that is new growth since I put it in there about a month and a half, two months ago. And it is also in the five gallon crack key that I have here in my grow tent. but. I'm just absolutely amazed at the way that has grown and how dense all the leaves are and how well it's branched and I've hardly had, I mean I've got a few of these leaves that just naturally drop off, but it's doing so well. Um, it just amazes me. I've got to try this with some other peppers that I have that I like. Um, how I start them is I start them in these cups, just in regular soil until they get up until they're starting to put out some pretty good roots in the bottom of them. Then I'll take and rinse all the roots off, or rinse the dirt off the roots, and then I'll put it in a three inch net cup. From there, I was throwing it in one of these large mason jars and allowing it to grow that way. But I think that's a mistake when you're trying to grow them and these because now I only have this small support system on here and see how easily that plant tips in and out of there. So I think I need to go, before I put it in this three inch, I need to just go ahead and put it in these large six inch ones that I have. And I think I'm gonna try it that way and see if I can do that with, I don't know, one of my favorites up here. I like the Brazilian starfish this year. I think I might throw that in a five gallon crack key and see how that works out for me. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm a little worried with how big a Brazilian starfish has a tendency to grow. Um, 
I don't think it'll be compact like this by any sense of the imagination, but I don't really know. So I think I'll give that a shot this year or this winter as well. The fish pepper that I brought in is still not doing so well yet. I've cut off most of the peppers, hoping that this puts on a nice new flush of growth. Uh, I really love all the variegation that's on here, which is hard to tell at the moment because I have the LEDs on. Let me shut those off and that might help. So that's how variegated this one is. Out of roughly 12 plants that I grew, this is the only one that was really super variegated. Um, the top was growing really well when it was outdoors, and at one point it really kind of turned into this, where the leaves kind of fell off on the top, but the bottom growth still remained pretty good. I don't know whether I got it overwatered, whether I underwatered it. It's in a fabric pot, so overwatering maybe was still an issue um, because these would get really soggy if it rained, but I'm hoping this one snaps back because I really like it, but I am saving seeds off of this one because I really like the way it produces these, these variegated pods, and as they ripen up, they just look so cool. They're, eh, they're okay for taste. Uh, I'm growing it more for the amusement of it. There's a pretty good story about uh, how the fish pepper got started back up again. If you look that up online, it's pretty cool. Another thing I'm trying out here are these Brain Science Grow Bags. Not that I'm promoting them, but um, it's got an interesting concept. Instead of the fabric like these pots are, the landscape fabric, which worked pretty well this year and a lot cheaper, this bag is this mesh. And this mesh is supposed to last a long, long time and it's kind of easier to handle, is what I found. Um, I've got this African blue basil started in here since they can't be started by seed. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious as to how well it's gonna grow in that one gallon pot. And part of my curiosity is also over here. I pulled this one out of the ground before the harsh weather started to hit, well, harsh for my part of Oregon anyway, when the freeze started. And I'm interested to see how well this does. Once I transferred it to here, I started getting all kinds of new growth on here. Um, flowers are on here. It's all doing really well. This was a Bahamian Beast F1. But what grew from this, it was really interesting. Uh, out of all the four different seeds I got, one was yellow, one was chocolate, one was orange, and one was red. This was the yellow one, and I really liked the way that this one tasted, so I thought I'd dig it up, stick it in this one gallon pot, uh, this air root type of pot, and see if it would do okay over the winter to try to maybe hold back the size of the plant while still producing, hopefully, a bunch of pods. When I pull up the root systems on some of the other, some of the other uh, peppers that I had, outside growing I noticed the root system wasn't getting really huge out in the soil and the soil isn't as good so I knew this was gonna happen but it would fit perfectly in here so this is gonna be another good experiment for how a plant that has grown for a year is gonna do inside a smaller pot like this that'll air prune the roots which is supposed to be kind of cool um, I'm actually been very impressed with how they grew this last year um, with a one gallon, it's gonna be interesting. This one over here is one I'm growing for my mom because she asked me to grow it. Uh, it's not growing very tall, but it does have a couple little peppers in there. I think it's a Bequino or something like that. It went from the double cup method that I showed a few minutes ago right into here. And that's what I plan on doing with a few of the peppers that I'm starting this year. I've ordered more of these pots, and I think a lot of these, some of my favorites from last year, are going to go in there. And ones that I know that aren't going to grow real huge are also going to go in some of those one gallons. And see if I can get a, I can get a little better jump on it this year than I did this last year. Uh, the fabric pots were great, and the plants grew huge, but the plants grew really huge, and my peppers weren't getting very ripe very fast. What I grew out in the ground ripened up faster, but they were a lot smaller. So for me, 
it's all about the fun and the experiment. Oh, I'll show you one more here. This one had a lot of white fly damage when it was in here. So I have these, uh, these awesome sticky, sticky little yellow stickies. It also catches the, those black fly that get on there. And that one doesn't have as many white flies, but I think I've broke the cycle of white fly hatches in here, along with some ladybugs that are wandering around. This one got attacked so bad I cut all the leaves off of it and it's coming back. This one didn't. This one kind of succumbed to the uh, white fly damage, so that one will go outside and uh, we'll start something else in there. Too bad, I kind of like that one. That was a scotch bonnet. Uh, this one's a Reaper cross with Jay's Peach Ghost, which has been a really fun pepper to put into some sauces. Those these wicked, bumpy, curvy, some of them have kind of a reaper tail on them, some of them don't, it's, don't. it's just been great. Uh, but I've actually got quite a few peppers off of just this in a mason jar. And this one's been, I don't know if I put the date on when I started it. Yeah, I started this in January 21st of last year. So this one's been going a year and it survived and I took all the leaves off of it and this one's starting to grow back sitting underneath an LED grow light that's on this rack that I put in this this weekend. So that's kind of an update of what I've got going on. Experiments, fun, growing inside over the winter because I can't outside. And I'm just having a blast doing this. And if you guys ever want to do a crack key or anything like that, I highly recommend it. Uh, look up information online. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm just a rookie at it myself, but I've had a lot of fun with it. And the results so far, anyway, have been real good. I, I can't wait to see what this does uh, over the course of the winter because I'm amazed at how thick and dense it is. Uh, how many flowers are growing on this one and the Scarlet Lantern over there. I'm kind of excited to do a few more. I just don't have a whole lot of room. I have my favorite basil over here that I brought in from outside. Yep, I brought in plants from outside to the inside. A small army of ladybugs to help take care of any, well, not any, most of the bugs that were in here. I'm always going to have bugs on the inside. That's just life. But I'm managing the pest really well with the ladybugs. I hardly see any flying around in here after about a month. And I only rinse the plants off once or twice before sticking them in a pot and throwing them here in the grow room. Um, don't know if there's much more to say besides that other than if you get a chance, you get the opportunity, go ahead and try growing stuff in a crack key method. I do recommend probably going with the six inch integrated pot that's on here versus this little three inch. Um, I might have to secure that down in another way because with the size of this plant and how top heavy it's starting to get, uh, I think it's gonna be an issue. Uh, I may just anchor it as I was about to stop. I may just anchor some of these branches, drill a little hole down here in a tab and just put like a little string or twine or something to anchor it and hold it upright. Instead of doing any big elaborate thing around it, that might just be enough to balance it out as long as I'm not playing too much with this and pulling it out and checking it out. Um, other than that, give this a try. It's, it's a blast. Uh, if you have the chance, get yourself a grow tent and a few of these LED lights. I recommend a heater and uh, you know, just have a good time with it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I, I will be more than happy to let you know what I found out and I'll also be happy to let you know that, you know, I really don't know. Because it's, for me, it's all about the fun. But anyway, thanks and enjoy the rest of your night.